unmarked brown box. It can mean only one thing, embargo lift. So we get the Meshify C Mini from Fractal. The Meshify, I, I think it's fair to say it's one of my favorite cases of 2017. So the Micro ATX version. Now I think the Micro ATX is a really interesting platform because it gives you a physically smaller PC, theoretically not really any compromises unless you're going to run a ton of peripherals, but even dual graphics cards are kind of an option. Now Raven Ridge also just came out. Raven Ridge, it's the Vega integrated you know, Ryzen plus Vega CPUs from AMD, if you've been living under a rock. And so I just happened to have a Raven Ridge Ryzen 5 2400G with built-in graphics. Got HDMI, DisplayPort, and VGA. Now this motherboard I haven't reviewed yet. It's the MSI B350M Gaming Pro. So you get some middle of the road boards for the, you know, Ryzen 5 CPUs, but this is not the Raven Ridge review. This is the let's build it in the mesh of I C. So I'm gonna start with this and then we're gonna change it up some, and then we're gonna change it up some more just to demonstrate the, uh, the upgrade path of Ryzen. If you were doing a similar budget build like this, I would probably recommend a SATA hard drive. Although I've splurged a little bit, I've got an ADATA 256 gig NVMe because we're gonna be testing NVMe performance on Raven Ridge for the Raven Ridge review. Now Raven Ridge also, because you're sharing system memory with graphics, the faster the system memory, the better off you're gonna be. And so in this case, I've got some G-Skill Trident Z RGB memory. This is a DDR4-4000. I'm just gonna run it at 3200 with tighter timings because I've done some experiments and that seems like that works better for me. I also had some A-Data memory. It was 2400 though. And unless you get a really, really good deal on the memory, I think that you're gonna wanna go for you know, 2666 or 2933 if you possibly can. Officially, Raven Ridge does support 2933, so. Inside the Meshify Mini C, I see mounting options for both ITX and full-size micro ATX. I see five expansion slots. I've got mounting options at the front and rear and top for fans. Now, one thing that is a little awkward on this case is it's got this removable door on the power supply shroud and it hides two three and a half inch bays, which is great. But if you're going to use a larger radiator or you want to reposition your fans and your radiator in the front of the machine, you'll have to remove that door and you'll have to remove your two three and a half inch bays because there's just not enough clearance there to get everything in the front. It is a little awkward because you have to take off not just the front dust filter, but actually the front frame itself in order to unscrew two screws to be able to get to that door. There are rubber grommets for, for cable hiding, it's sort of a raised shelf so that you can route the power cables and PCI Express power cables, motherboard power cables, SATA cables, that sort of thing through the front. At the back, we've got the same two and a half inch hard drive tray that we come to know and love from the full size ATX Meshify C. And we've got retained thumb screws on the side panel. I love retained thumb screws on side panels. As we can see at the back, we've got three built-in Velcro strips for cable management, tons of cable tie-off points if you want to use bread ties or something like that. Don't use zip ties. I know the case comes with them. Don't use them. It's a trap. It's also nice to see that this case comes with two cooling fans pre-installed, one in the front, one in the rear. These are three pin fans. At the top for IO, it's the same layout as the ATX Meshify C. We've got a reset button analog microphone, analog headphone, a big square power button, and two USB 3.0 ports. And of course, the same lovely accessory box, which contains more motherboard standoffs, standoffs for your two and a half inch and three and a half inch drive mounts, an installation screw for motherboard standoffs, this is the aforementioned zip ties, uh, and then uh, drive screws and power supply screws. Just eyeballing the clearance on the bottom of the case, on thick pile carpeting, I'm not sure that I would use this case on thick pile carpeting if you're gonna draw in air from the bottom, just because it doesn't look like it's gonna sit far enough off the carpet to really breathe in. But with these smaller desktop cases, they're really not out of place on top of your desktop rather than under it. So I think in terms of like, where would you put the computer? I think definitely put this computer on top of your desk if you're in a carpeted room. Now, one of the motherboard standoffs in this case is just a peg, which is a nice feature because you can you know, sort of position the motherboard where it needs to go and it'll just click onto the peg. That makes installing your screws a lot easier. Otherwise, you sort of have to hold the motherboard while you screw it in, which can be a little tricky. Now, before we did the build, I had already installed Windows on the ADATA XPG SSD and it has booted successfully. 
in its new home. And it's whisper quiet. My fans are going. I consider this a win. What are some upgrades we could do in the future? Well, get a 1070 Ti, just as soon as the prices come back to normal. We could also add a closed loop water cooler if we upgrade our CPU. Now the, the cooler that comes with the Ryzen 5 2400G, it's not bad. You could do a little bit of an overclock with it, but if you're gonna get something higher end, like a graphics card and a closed loop cooler upgrade, well, you could do that. Now some people may say, you're crazy. Don't run an, eight, an 1800X on a B350 motherboard. And that is true. I mean, the 1800X, especially with an overclock, is gonna require more power then this motherboard can really deliver on a long time scale. But think about CPUs two or three years from now. It, the amount of power they use is dropping and they're getting faster. So it's not unreasonable to think two years from now, three years from now, you could get an eight core 1800X equivalent with graphics. That's probably gonna be like a 1060, 1070 equivalent for another $150, $200 for this AM4 platform. The AM4 socket is, according to AMD, gonna be a very, very long lived socket. So for me though, I wanna do the experiment. I wanna put the 95 watt TDP 1800X CPU in this and just see how the upgrade path is. We can do some benchmarks with our Ryzen 5 2400G and do some gaming benchmarks through the motherboard review. And then we're gonna slam in the 1070 Ti along with the 1800X and this Celsius S24. This Celsius S24 is gonna keep that 1800X nice and cool. We'll push the 1800X a little bit. I'm hoping we can hit four gigahertz with a reasonable voltage overclock on this MSI B350 Gaming Pro motherboard in our Fractal Meshify Mini C. But that, that's gonna be a video for another day. The verdict on the build in this Meshify C, the airflow seems great. We haven't put anything in the case that really generates a lot of heat yet really seems like lightning has struck twice with this design from Fractal. I'm really impressed with the Meshify uh, C and the Meshify Mini C. It's just, it's more of the same, but a micro ATX form factor. Be curious to see what they pull out of the hat for Mini ITX, but hey, the Node 304, still one of the best Mini ITX cases ever made. So, and that's like what, five years later? It's hard to improve on perfection, although I'd love to see a Node 304 Mark II or something like that crazy person. Yeah, Meshify Mini C. It was a lot of fun to build in this, tons of room. It's relatively compact. Got the dust filter, the removable dust filter at the top. Same sort of design aesthetic, same tempered glass. You know, understated, understated, not a lot of RGB insanity, which I, I like personally. Uh, although you could show off a lot of RGB stuff with the tempered glass side panel. It's tinted, so, you know. Let's get started on this upgrade and the Ryzen 5 2400G video. Those should be out soon, I hope.